Did you know Apple released black variants of their MacBook? Well, they did, and today we're going to be cleaning one of these up, thanks to Electronic Recycling Australia, who provided this unit for me to make the video on. They're one of South Australia's leading e-waste recyclers, and they also assist and provide people with disabilities ongoing employment. So let's clean up this filthy old laptop. I know I talk about the laptops I find being dusty, but this one well and truly is. The screen has so much on it that you can make out the imprints of the keys. I'm really hoping that the display surface isn't damaged underneath. The black plastic surface is prone to smudges and a lot of gunk has built up over time. This will be a fun one to clean up, and I can only imagine how bad the internals are. Since I now own a black car, I'm familiar with how easily imperfections show up on the surface. That's just one of the trade-offs with this colour. It'll start to look dirty pretty quickly. I also don't think this laptop has ever been cleaned. Thankfully, when I plugged it in, it did indeed chime and boot up. Quite some time later, it was into macOS. Apparently, the hard drive was completely full. And I can confirm this is a mid-2007 2.16 GHz model. From the research I've done, the black variant costs 300 more Australian dollars. And aside from the obvious colour difference, the only other difference I could find was a slightly larger hard disk. So you really were paying for the privilege to have a black MacBook. And that's also another reason why these things are probably quite uncommon now, because not as many people had them. Well, so we can see that it does indeed turn on, and I think it's time we give it a clean with a healthy dose of eucalyptus oil, because this thing... This thing's filthy! I'm sure I don't need to tell you this, but if your laptop looks like this, it's time to give it a clean. But, as I always say, you should clean off any second-hand electronics you buy, because you never know who or what's been touching the surface. The display also came up looking pretty good, only a few marks left from touching the keycaps. I'll do a more in-depth cleaning later on in the video, but for now, this is at least a little more sanitary. One good design aspect with the A1181 MacBooks was the user-removable battery. It looks like this battery was removed frequently, given how chewed up the release mechanism is. But even though the previous owner was clearly swapping the batteries out on a regular basis, the one that's in here is completely dead, so I'll have to buy a new one later in the video. Apple really wanted you to be able to upgrade the RAM and hard disk yourself, which are both under this little bracket in the battery compartment. All you've got to do is pull on this little tab and the drive slides out. The RAM also slides out when you advance this lever. At first I thought someone had put thermal paste on the RAM, but after mentioning this on Twitter, it turns out this substance is called dielectric grease. It's normally used on electronic connections to keep water and debris out, which makes sense given that this compartment would frequently be opened by the user. There are many screws of varying lengths you'll have to remove to get inside one of these A1181 MacBooks. I'd suggest keeping track of the screws in a segmented container. And to follow a tutorial, I've linked the iFixit one I followed in the description below. Now, with all the screws removed, I carefully detach the top casing. Before we take things further, I'd like to tell you that today's video is sponsored by Exta. If your current wallet is weighing you down, why not get one of Exta's sleek, minimalist wallets? Get access to all your cards with ease, carry cash, and have peace of mind with the solar-powered tracker. It's easy to pair with your smartphone and allows you to find your extra wallet. Or if you misplace your phone, you can simply press the button on the solar-powered tracker card. Not only does this aluminium card holder model look good, it's also made from premium materials which are designed to last. The RFID protection also shields the cards within, helping to protect your money and identity. It's so much slimmer than a conventional wallet, and if you use my discount code in the description below, you'll also save some money. Exeter has a wide range of different designs and finishes on their website, and there's even cases, bags, and other accessories available too. Go to exeter.com forward slash PCRI to receive a discount off your next order. Thanks again to Exeter for sponsoring this video. Revealing the filthy, dust-ridden internals of the Mac, it seems like some bugs also called this home at some point. I wonder if the rent was cheap. At least there would have been no shortage of heat in there. Next, I vacuumed up most of the dust and resident bug remnants. Somehow, it doesn't look as if the bugs had done any damage, but this plastic strip connecting the cooling fan with the exhaust pipe has disintegrated, but it wasn't very important, luckily. Removing the heatsink on the soldered NT7400 processor requires you to disconnect the temperature sensors. If you're ever doing this, be careful not to break the wires. Now we get our first look at the crusty thermal paste. There's also no shortage of dust and dead bugs in the fan. All it took was the removal of three screws to open it up and dust off the blades. The old paste wouldn't have been very effective, considering it was rock hard. And to make sure the surface is free of impurities, I used some isopropyl alcohol. I then went through and did the same with the heatsink. 
I then applied some new thermal compound. I took some of your advice and spread it out a bit with a plastic card. And while I've got the laptop open, I applied some new thread locker to the hinge screws to make sure that they stay tight and don't loosen over time. Now the reassembly can begin. It wasn't overly difficult to get into here, it just required quite a few steps, which is once again why I'd recommend following a tutorial. Replacing the slow, original hard drive is a BX500 SSD, which will be a big help with making the laptop run faster. I'm also putting in 4GB of RAM, the maximum this laptop can handle. And I did buy a replacement battery. They didn't have any black ones in stock, but this will work just the same. And it fits in just nicely. I went over some of the tougher stains with some Ajax spray and wipe, which easily removed the grime that ISO alcohol and eucalyptus oil couldn't. The latest version of macOS this laptop officially supports is 10.7.5 Lion, which I tried to install, but it simply wouldn't work, even after several attempts. I then tried macOS 10.6 Snow Leopard, which installed without any problems. The 4GB of RAM are also seen by the system, which is nice. Something strange was happening though, while the built-in speakers play the chime on startup, they aren't recognised in macOS. This is caused by the analogue or digital switch in the headphone port to be stuck, leaving a visible red light to be constantly on. I looked back at the footage and there was already a problem before I worked on the laptop, as you can see by the greyed out sound icon. I followed some suggestions online, first of which was blowing air into the port. Uh, this had no effect for me. What ended up working was engaging the switch by prodding at it with a thin piece of plastic. I still don't know exactly where the switch is in the port, but it did indeed work. The laptop is definitely looking a lot cleaner. Far better than it did originally, that's for sure. So let's try using this old Apple MacBook. Mac OS Snow Leopard is quite outdated and barely anything runs on it. I was able to get Super Tux Cart working. It runs okay. The fact that this MacBook has a 64 megabyte Intel GMA graphics chip means gaming is mostly out of the question. Mac OS Snow Leopard is actually the last version to support PowerPC based applications, so you can run really old software, such as Halo Combat Evolved, but even still, it doesn't run well. Taking a step back to the 90s, Fallout 2 runs great on here. I still don't know how to play it though, although I've heard it's a lot of fun. Maybe one day I'll get into it. Pretty much the best browser for this laptop is Arctic Fox and I was able to comfortably play YouTube videos at 720p. Web browsing in general was totally still possible. In fact, for word processing and basic tasks, this laptop is still very usable. It also helps that the keyboard is surprisingly good. While cosmetically this laptop is pretty worn, being used heavily for many years, it still works, even after all of that. It's compact, and I think the black version has aged better than the standard white one. If you were to install a version of Linux, I'm sure you can achieve even more than I did in macOS 10.6. Perhaps one day these will become collectible, and while not easy to find, they are pretty cheap, so maybe pick one up if it interests you. Thank you very much for watching. I'm glad to finally have a working black MacBook in my collection. They're honestly becoming quite hard to find these days. Anyway, also a big thanks to Electronic Recycling Australia who generously provided this laptop. They also sell affordable refurbished computers and laptops on their website that's also linked in the description below. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video.